Let's talk about the unique limiting state vector for a Markov chain. So previously we introduced definitions and talked about how to use them for classifying the states of a Markov chain. And here we'll just assume that you're comfortable with those definitions. So if a finite state homogeneous discrete time Markov chain is irreducible, and remember that means it has a single communicating class and aperiodic, meaning that all the states have period one, then it has a unique limiting probability state vector, which we're going to call pi. And that's really the limit of the state vector as time goes to infinity. So it basically settles in to a steady state distribution. Okay, so normalization tells us that this probability vector has to sum up to one, the entry sum up to one. It'll turn out that all the states will have positive probability in this case. So all of them will be positive when we know that it's irreducible and aperiodic. Any probability state vector that we start with will eventually converge to pi. And pi is actually an eigenvector of p transpose with eigenvalue one, meaning that it satisfies this equation. Okay, and we can use this equation along with normalization to get a system of k equations. Okay, so a linear system of k equations that we can solve for the k variables that we're interested in in this limiting distribution. And that allows us to avoid directly solving for the eigenvector, which can be pretty annoying, especially if the matrix gets large. Okay, so this is a really nice shortcut, and that's how we're going to solve all of these expressions. Okay, let's do a simple example. So we're coming back to this Markov chain with two states that we've seen before. And we're wondering, does it have a unique limiting state probability vector, which we're calling pi, which is again this limit as pt goes to as t goes to infinity for pt. And if so, solve for that vector. Okay, so what's the communicating class? It's just the single class one, two. And so since there's just a single communicating class, then we know that the Markov chain is irreducible because that's the definition of irreducible, one communicating class. The period of this class is one, since there is a cycle of length one, right? So you could look, one goes to itself. And so the Markov chain is aperiodic because this class has period one. So since the chain is irreducible and aperiodic, it has a unique limit, which we call pi vector. Okay, to solve for it, I write this steady state equation. And I'm gonna do that by writing the transpose of this matrix that I had above times the entries of pi, which I call pi one and pi two, the long-term probabilities of the states, okay? And that has to be equal to pi one, pi two, because basically once I settle into this limit, it's just going to stay in that distribution forever. Okay, so I know that when I multiply by p transpose, it's not going to affect the distribution, so I can use that fact to solve for what pi should be. So from this, I'm gonna get two equations. I get a fifth pi one plus three fifths pi two equals pi one, and four fifths pi one plus two fifths pi two is equal to pi two. So I'm gonna take this first equation and it tells me that three fifths pi two equals four fifths pi one, meaning that pi one is equal to 3 fourths pi 2. Okay, and by nor now what I'm going to do is use normalization, which tells me that the pi j values have to sum to 1. So that tells me pi 1 plus pi 2 here has to solve sum to 1. And so I'm going to use this and substitute it in for pi 2, or sorry, for pi 1. And then I'm just going to solve for pi 2. And this is going to tell me pi 2 is 4 sevenths. And then I come back to this equation, it tells me pi 1 is 3 sevenths. Let's do another example. So this one's gonna be a little more complicated. I'm gonna have four states, okay? And you know I have these arcs. So I have this matrix, which is zero, one, four, three fourths, and then a bunch of ones and zeros, okay? So is there uh, a unique limiting state probability vector pi? Okay, so this pi vector. And if so, we're gonna again solve for it. So. Let's go through the same process. How many communicating classes do we have? In this case, there's just one class. So it's one, two, three, four. Every state is reachable from every other state. So the markup chain is irreducible. 
the period of this class is actually going to be the GCD of this cycle of length two and this cycle of length three. So those are two cycles that I have and the GCD of two and three is one. So I see that it's aperiodic. So this is a slightly more complicated example. I can't immediately see through a self cycle that the period is one. But I get that the Markov chain is irreducible, okay, and aperiodic. And those are the two conditions that I needed to say that this unique limit pi vector exists. Okay, so how am I going to find it? Well, I'm going to take this equation, p transpose pi equals pi. I'm going to transpose my transition matrix, okay? So I'm taking the transpose here and writing it out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to relate every value here in this vector to one of the values in the vector. So I'm going to pick a value for which it's easy to relate each other value to it, okay? So let's see how that works. So here, I'm going to start with the second row. I'm going to say a fourth pi 1 equals pi 2. That tells me that pi 2 can be written in terms of pi 1 with this factor of 1 fourth. So now the game is I'm going to try to connect all the other values, pi 3 and pi 4, back to pi 1. Okay, so here I have 3 fourths, pi 1 is equal to pi 3. So I'm done with that. And here I have pi 3 is equal to pi 4. That's not yet in terms of pi 1. So I substitute this back in and I get 3 fourths pi 1 is equal to pi 4. Okay, and so now I've connected all the values back to pi 1. Okay, so I take the normalization equation, which is that the sum of the pi values has to be equal to one. In this case, it's pi one plus pi two plus pi three plus pi four is equal to one. And I substitute in, in terms of pi one. So I get a fourth pi one for this, right? So I got that from this orange expression, three fourths pi three, sorry, pi one for this from the purple expression and three fourths pi one for pi four from the red expression. So that lets me solve for pi one. So it tells me pi one has to be equal to four elevenths. Then I can go back to each of these expressions and plug in that value of pi one and then solve for pi two, pi three, pi four. And you see these now all sum up to one. That's what I expected. And so the pi vector in this case is gonna be pi one, pi two, pi three, and pi four. And I can just write that out as I got those values, 4 elevenths, 1 11th, 3 elevenths, and 3 elevenths. Okay, to wrap up, let's talk about one more case where we can uh, deal with the limiting distribution. So we said, if there's an irreducible chain, it works, but what if there's a single recurrent class, which is aperiodic, and then a bunch of transient states? Okay, well, that's fine because what's gonna happen is all the transient states are gonna leak their probability over to the recurrent class. So they're eventually gonna have probability zero and then that recurrent class will just behave like an irreducible chain on its own, forgetting about the transient states. So here there's still going to be a unique limit. Okay, so we can still find this pi, which is the limit of PT as T goes to infinity. And to solve for this pi, what we're gonna do is first set the pi j values equal to zero for the transient states, and then just solve for everything else as before. So it's important that we do this zeroing first, as we'll see in this example. So here's a Markov chain that's going to have some transient states, okay? So in this case, we're gonna see that the state three is leaking out its probability, okay? So there's class one, which consists of one, two, and four. And there's that's a recurrent class, which is aperiodic because of that self-cycle on one. And there's class two, which is just state three. This is a transient class, and it also happens to be aperiodic. But it actually could be periodic as long as it's transient, okay? So I know that there's a unique limit, pi, so that's fine by this, uh, by these conditions I have above, there's a unique limit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the transient states. In this case, there's just one transient state. I'm going to set the probability of that state in the end to zero because I know it's going to eventually leak out all its probability. So here I'm just saying pi 3 equals zero. Okay, now I'm going to solve for the remaining pi j that sit in class 1, the recurrent class. Okay, the way I'm going to do that 
It's going to use this steady state equation. I'm going to write the transpose of the transition matrix. So this I can just work out by looking at this diagram. Okay, so I've already done that here. And now I'm going to write this uh, state vector, but I'm going to put a zero for pi three. It's important that I do that here. So I put a zero for pi three. I also put a zero for pi three here. I just want to show that it's not participating in this um, system. So I get one third pi one plus a half pi two is equal to pi one. Okay, and I'm going to solve uh, that in a minute. Two thirds pi one plus pi four is equal to pi two and one half pi two is equal to pi four. Okay, so this tells me that three fourths pi two is equal to pi one, and I've now related pi one to pi two. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this in my normalization equation, which says that pi one plus pi two plus pi four is equal to one. So this is gonna let me say that three fourths pi two is pi one. Now I need to do something for pi four, I'll use this, it's a half pi two, okay? And so ultimately I get that this equals one, so nine fourths pi two is equal to one, and that tells me that pi two is equal to four ninths. And so I can use these expressions to say that pi four is equal to two ninths and pi one is equal to three ninths. And those sum up to one and I'm done. Okay, so I also know that pi three is equal to zero. I could write this as a vector, but we've run out of room here and we'll just leave it at that.